Hello. Welcome back to the Senior Design Quick Lecture Series. Today's topic is Don't Be Evil. A simple moral lesson that you should apply to your careers as computer scientists and developers. I hope to do a couple of these little quick moral lessons. So this is just the first of a few parts. We'll see if we have time this semester if you're not interested feel free to tune out. But I will say that computer science in general has a pretty big problem with not asking the question of, should I? <laughs> computer scientists tend to ask, ask the questions of, uh, can I? And how can I? Uh, very rarely do you hear people ask, should I? And then when you ask them, occasionally, if you ask a computer science professional, should you be doing this? They go, well, I mean, I can. <laughs> What technology would I use instead? How else would I implement this? Okay, but sometimes there's more to the question than that. Just something to think about. So the motto, don't be evil, was popularized by Google. It was Google's one of Google's official mottos during the company's inception. This is before they rolled all their different organizations into the parent company alphabet. So this is actually just regular Google's motto. And... It's actually even part of their initial public offering. Even in their IPO documents, they include references to that. Don't be evil philosophy. Of course, the founders originally included it as a semi a joke, and it basically just means don't do bad things in general. Um, but it, it's sort of also rephrased to you can still make money without being evil, uh, which is a, a little bit less of a powerful expression but much more applicable to corporate ethos is, uh, can you still make a living? Can you still make money for yourself and for your shareholders while not being generally what one would consider evil? Evil is a very difficult thing to subjectively assign to. So obviously a corporation made up of a lot of different people has a lot of different ideas of what evil might be. So what the culture really boils down to is if you see something that you think is evil, you have to speak up. And then if a lot of people speak up, maybe we'll do something different or maybe we'll change the way you do it. Someone asked, what if I'm lawful evil? Well, still probably evil. If you don't approve of what you're doing, maybe you shouldn't do it. Now, Google's gotten a lot of criticism for gradually downgrading this motto. Um, they removed it as their motto, added it to their code of conduct, then moved it later in their code of conduct, but it's still there. So whether it appears at the beginning or the end or whatever, you know, it's still in there. So don't give them too much criticism. I don't really buy the, the criticism of, oh, they moved it. Uh, yeah, but it's still in there. Okay. So Google expression, don't be evil. Let's look at an example of Google trying not to be evil. So in the mid to late 2000s, Google's approached by China, basically, and they decide to start working on what's secretly known at Google internally as Project Dragonfly. This was a search engine that Google planned to build, essentially for China, since the government in China has broad control over their internet. This would be essentially for the Chinese government. And among other interesting features, Dragonfly would allow users to be tracked pretty aggressively so that if somebody was searching for things that a dissident might search for, it would be pretty obvious to the government who you were, where you were, and what you were searching for. So not great in terms of oppression of the Chinese people. And of course, it triggered a fairly large backlash inside of Google's development teams and, you know, internal politics. And this is before it was even exposed to the broader uh, society for them to get outraged over it. In fact, it was exposed largely because internal developers at Google leaked information about it to the media because they were so upset that their organization was working on something like this. And it was ultimately discontinued. Project Dragonfly doesn't exist today. In fact, Google irritated China so much in the wake of the Aurora attacks, which targeted Google as well as other companies, that they got themselves basically booted out of China, a country with uh, somewhere between one and a half and two billion paying customers, which cost Google at least billions of dollars. But at least they didn't participate in this Project Dragonfly 
search engine. But you might ask, does it really matter? Because China still has a search engine. It's called Baidu. It probably does almost the same things that Dragonfly does. It's not like we know for certain what goes on internally. It's China's largest search engine. It's basically only available in Asia. Today, instead of being partners with Google, China's largest search engine is partners with Microsoft. Baidu comes bundled with Edge. And Bing, surprisingly, did not irritate China enough to get blocked. So Microsoft still makes billions of dollars in China. Okay, so you might say, well, in terms of what happened overall, in terms of the impact to society, Google basically killing Project Dragonfly through its objection and then getting themselves kicked out of China has accomplished relatively little. Okay, maybe. But if you are one of the developers that was supposed to be working on Dragonfly, or if you're part of the organization that was supposed to be working on Dragonfly, it's not on you. And that's the important thing that I want to convey, is that you can't stop all of the evil that exists in the world, but you can stop it from being on you. And while you're not entirely 100% responsible for everything that your organization does, especially the parts that you're not involved with when it's a giant corporation, you are responsible for what your organization does at the end of the day. Everything that they do is, at least to a small extent, your fault and your responsibility. So when you say, it's not my problem, well, it kind of is. Here's an example that I like. It's a tweet from October. This was pretty popular in circles on the internet. I'll never forget my programming teacher who was like a senior dev at IBM and decided he was done writing missile guidance software. When he was telling us this, he said, I just woke up one morning and it struck me that I was a murderer, so I quit. And this is a reply to SpaceX promising the Pentagon one-hour weapon delivery around the globe. So nukes from space, right? Uh, glass a city anywhere in the world within an hour. Okay, useful, nice to have. Evil? Maybe. This is something you want to be responsible for? You should decide. And if it's not something you want to be responsible for, just don't do it. You don't have to. There are plenty of jobs out there, and computer scientists have a lot of influence. Among all the different professions, you know, there are some professions that don't have a lot of influence. Retail workers probably don't have a lot of influence over what their organization does. Software developers have a lot of influence over what their organization does. If you can't find qualified software developers, you just can't do a thing. And software developers that are qualified are not so easy to come by. So you have, unlike most professions, a lot of power to say, this is not a thing I like to do. I'm not going to do it. It's a bad thing. And if enough people do that, then these bad things just won't get done. But if you like developing missiles, by the way, no judgment on you. Certainly an argument for missile guidance software being a net good on the world. Sure, just do what you think is right and don't feel like you're not responsible for it. So, the list of things that are not an excuse. I'm just doing my job. I was just following orders. I was just trying to make a living. Anything else that's dismissing the thing that you do every day, your professional employment, as something that's not your responsibility. You're responsible for everything you do. In organizations like the US military, even if somebody gives you an order, and that order is immoral, if you follow it, it's still on you. And we know this is true because after a war is over, if you've done something that you weren't supposed to do that was really bad, you will still probably get war crime trialed and all those wonderful things that happen to you if you've committed terrible acts in war. So even in that situation, which is a lot more clear cut, these things are not more excuse these things are not excuses. So in your situation, where you're just doing a job for money, something you can easily get out of, no one's shooting at you, you know, you're not in any real danger. Just don't do it. If you don't think it's right, don't do it. And that doesn't mean that you have to stand up and object to every little single injustice at your organization. There are way too many bad things in the world for you to make an issue out of all of them. You don't have to agree with everything your company does, but you have to be at least comfortable being partly responsible for everything your company does. You can't allow them to do something that is completely unconscionable to you. If you do that, you're just making the world a crappier place. If you want to know more about this kind of philosophy, I suggest reading the Live Not By Lies essay by Solzhenitsyn. It's a pretty short one, and to summarize it, basically, you don't have to stand up for yourself, you don't have to attend rallies, you don't have to protest, you don't have to publish 
blogs or whatever it is decrying all the evils of the world, all you really have to do to make a difference and be a good person is don't say things that aren't true and don't act against your own morality in public and even in private. Live by the rules that you have for yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to others. And that's a pretty damn good start. All right, that's it for today. I will see you guys in Discord.